10 years. The melancholy of Harvey Suzumiya has been hyped up and analyzed for 10 years. Over time, I realized there was more to it than a slice of life show, and after finishing it, I'd say it definitely would have stuck out of the crowd at least until Steins Gate came out. However, this discussion is about what I think about it in the year 2020. The thoughts of someone seeing it for the first time after hearing all the hype for 10 years. First, no spoilers. This show is easily the most polarizing series I've ever seen. Just about half of the series I love so much I consider it a 10 out of 10. The other half, I would say it's about a 2 out of 10. This is complex because there are three ways to watch this series. There's original broadcast order, DVD order, and rebroadcasted chronicle order. I watched the Chronicle Order, and while I would definitely recommend this order, it gives the title character Haruhi an odd overall depiction. There are two sides to Haruhi, the constantly energetic version, who will never give up to achieve her goal or whim, and then there is the realistic girl who acts more like a normal girl who is trying her best to have a fun time in her last years of adolescence. Oddly, I don't like one type and hate the other. I like a mixture of her personality because while some realistic depictions of her show that she is learning from her mistakes or changing due to the main character, this side of her also is what makes her appear like two completely different characters. When she's highly energetic, it is usually fun to watch her give everything she's got into having fun or changing the world as much as she wants to, but then some episodes show her being oddly egotistical to a villainous degree. I'd call these episodes as being just plain wrong, since it's clear that while she has a ton of yes-men at her side at all times, anytime that anyone other than the main guy says something, she takes them very seriously and will try to accommodate their wants to some extent, other than Asakura, who she views as nothing more than a whiny pet. In short, Haruhi can be sympathized with and a joy to watch doing whatever she wants, but she's not always portrayed consistently or likably in a realistic way. Just because Haruhi is being more selfish during certain arcs doesn't make her a more realistic character when we've seen how much she can care about her friends just in an arc such as The Endless Eight. When they make the movies in the following arc, you would think that she's a completely different character. And oddly, those two arcs were made in the same season back to back. It entirely feels artificial when she's being completely inconsiderate toward everybody while making the movie. The main boy's name is Kion. He is easily the worst character for a complex set of reasons. First of all, he complains about not wanting to do what Haruhi wants even though he's the whole reason why she's doing all these things in the first place and he doesn't even acknowledge this. But I'll admit that he might just not realize the effect that he had on her. Also, even when other characters explain admittedly difficult to understand plot points or concepts, he just endlessly says he doesn't understand or stop talking nonsense. That's literally what he says. He doesn't ask a question to understand it better. He just says, stop talking. This makes him appear like either a complete idiot or annoying for not at least asking specific questions that would allow him to understand the particular situation better. Lastly, all he does is complain, when all he needs to do is come up with a decent alternative idea to help Haruhi. So while Haruhi always makes the plans, Kian is the guy who just complains rather than doing anything that would help him or everyone else have a better time doing Haruhi's plans. The last characters are Yuki Nagato, Asahina, and Koizumi. They all have their own well-explained backstories and motivations that Kian doesn't understand at all for no good reason. These three are Haruhi's yes men because Yuki has no outward opinion on anything. Asahina is a whiny girl who just wants to be left alone and do seemingly nothing 
I guess she's just very scared of the threat of Haruhi, to some extent. But she ends up enjoying Haruhi's club activities anyway. And Koizumi is just a yes man. However, Koizumi is also my favorite character by far, since he is the most intelligent and opinionated of everyone in the group. He does the bulk of the plot dumps and usually knows what's going on before anyone else in the group. There's also a girl called Tsuruya, who is just as energetic as Haruhi, but gets basically no screen time, unfortunately. But she still ends up being more fun to watch than most of the main cast, just because of how she connects to Haruhi in a completely different way than anyone else in the cast. But again, she's only in one or two episodes as any sort of main role. The whole series is made up of either standalone episodes showing a random escapade that Haruhi thought up that day, or a mini arc that addresses the world building aspect of the show, and delves into one of the characters' inner feelings about their backstory or current situation. In the show's chronological order, the first half is the best because it addresses every character's backstory and personality with basically no distractions. The problem with this is that Haruhi's character seems to be completely known and addressed by episode 6, leaving the last few episodes of this half to just be filled with hijinks of the highest degree. Not that it's not fun, just it seems the story's over even at that point. It's like the epilogue of the whole series is the last half of the first season. When it comes to the second season, I'd have to address spoilers. So for now, I'll say that the soundtrack is very memorable while also being a bit too repetitive at numerous parts. And while the animation's not spectacular, you wouldn't know that this show was 10 years old when looking at the art style of the show. Up to this point, even with the bad main character Kion, the show was about a 10 out of 10 due to its sincere emotions and Haruhi's heartfelt adventuring dragging everyone from one fun goal to the next. However, from now on, I will be starting the spoiler section of this review to address some very grievous issues in the show. The Endless 8 arc is actually not bad. I can completely understand the hate, and if you feel like you should skip it, you probably should. I'd say it isn't that important of an arc, and especially doesn't need 8 episodes to tell it, maybe more like 3 or 4, with more differences between each episode. Which is funny, because after finishing the show and looking into it more, I found that the season 1 director agrees with my point. <laughs> so that's pretty interesting. But just like him, I don't think it's a bad arc in any way. That said, this arc was the beginning of my hate for Kion. It is established in this arc that Nagato and Koizumi are basically fine in this time loop because at the end of the day, it is a very safe option with no life-threatening consequences. Asahina and Kion want to leave the endless summer because they are more normal in terms of their personality, but Asahina is too stupid to do anything at all. That leaves us with Kion. After about two or three episodes of the Endless Eight, I found out about four ways to escape the arc, but Kion either refused for no good reason to attempt any of these, and or just seemed like he was fine with repeating the days endlessly. At the end of the day, there would be moments where Kian obviously wanted to escape, but even though he was told many different possible solutions to the problem, he didn't try any of them at all until the very last episode. I could only stand stupidity for so long, so this was the beginning of the end for this character. Directly after this arc, however, is the sigh of Haruhi Suzumiya arc which was far worse than the Endless Eight arc. It is an arc filled with Haruhi being far more selfish than she'd ever been, and Kian not saying anything and almost punching Haruhi, even though he hasn't stated a good reason for why anything Haruhi is doing is worse than anything else she's done. Every other character acts as, a, as is typical in this arc, which is why this is kind of the Kian focused arc. His complaints end up being mostly valid, but most of his complaints are all in his head instead of being openly stated through his mouth. Also, when he voices his complaints, he pretty much just says the same thing every time, which we know Haruhi is going to ignore, since Kian complains equally about mundane and serious problems that Haruhi causes. In short, he sucks.
The series finishes off with the movie showing and the cultural festival festivities ending. It's a bit odd that Haruhi can sing so well, but it's no big deal. The weirder part is how Haruhi acts bizarrely normal compared to the rest of the entire series. She ends up feeling like a background character, which is even odder when the next episode she's acting her wackiest and dumbest of the entire series when she fails to create strategies to beat the computer club. I understand this is due to the fact that th these were shown in chronological order, but at the end of the day, that just reveals the shortcomings of the way the show was set up in the first place. Why do you go from the beginning of the series where Haruhi is consistently energetic, but also with a touch of realism, to pretty much just a normal girl in the Endless Eight, just wanting to have fun with her friends, to being outlandishly selfish and inconsiderate toward everyone she knows in the Sai of Haruhi Suzumiya arc, to being the most realistic she's ever been after showing the movie, back to being the energetic but realistic girl in the final episode. And to be fair, I'll chalk this all up to the fact that the chronological order is mixing up the order of how the show is being shown. However, when I say that the chronological order is mixing the episodes up, it actually just means that the creators mix up the order of the show for no particularly good reason. Why wasn't it the whole story just told chronologically? I have to say, if I, if I saw the student film first in the whole series, I would have dropped the show right there because Kion is endlessly narrating this movie. He talks about how horrible the movie is. You do get an idea of what Kion thinks about the whole situation, so you could say that this is an introduction to the main character. But personally, after everything that has happened in this show, I just wanted to watch the full film without any commentary whatsoever. It, it's very heartfelt to watch that movie after seeing everything that's gone on in the show. But to see that movie at the beginning, before you know anything, it would just be obnoxious. And nothing more. The final episode is a nice calm finale, but it calls back to the emotional moments between Kian and Haruhi that haven't occurred since episode 11. The Endless Eight could have had a good Kian Haruhi moment, but the series seems focused on ignoring that relationship completely. They all but confirm that Kian and Asahina are destined to be together, and who the heck knows what will happen to Haruhi. I will watch the movie any day now, but I definitely wanted to give my thoughts about this show before I see a film that came out a year after season 2. By the way, season 1 and season 2 came out 3 years apart. I don't get it. Especially since The Endless 8 was part of season 2. It kind of seems like The Endless 8 arc should have been dropped and the plot of the movie should have been used in season 2, but I guess I'll find out for myself. If you're wondering why you should bother watching this show after all this time, it's because its premise, characters, and execution still feel completely unique, and while it might not be as memorable as it used to appear, it still is unlike anything you've ever seen before. Thanks for listening to my ranting, and I hope you can check out the rest of my content. I know that I'm just starting out to some extent when it comes to analytical content, but I would like to continue this line of videos very quickly in the future. Sometimes I'll do more review based content and other times I'll just be talking about the ideas that I have for certain games or certain anime and I hope that you might end up enjoying what I come up with. I can't always guarantee that the editing will be particularly well done. But I do want to strive to have some entertaining music to listen to, since music is definitely something I like to prioritize when I watch a, a series. Please subscribe, please like the video, and please check out my Patreon, even though it's got nothing on it. <laughs>